not five minutes, but just a few words. Though, but I think that the uh, the reinvigoration of the anti-war movement, just like the reinvigoration about focusing on poverty, which reminds us of the legacy of Martin King, are two magnificent <coughs> gifts of the Occupy movement. Magnificent gifts of the Occupy movement. So that public discourse shifts now toward not just truth and justice, but more specifically toward militarism and a critique of militarism and connecting militarism not just as an ism but as part of the oligarchic structure as a whole so we get more close scrutiny of the military industrial complex and its connection to other when I was talking these other complexes be it military or Wall Street or, or the corporate media and so on they say. and uh, uh, you know, what upsets me about the uh, present discourse in the Democratic Party is, you know, they plan to run on a platform that has a strong militaristic dimension. We kill Bin Laden. For me, that's nothing to be proud of. Nope. I'm a Democrat. I believe in the rule of law. Even for people I have very, very strong critiques of. I think it's true. When Emma Till's mother stepped to the lectern and said, I don't have a minute to hate, I pursue justice for the rest of my life, which meant what? You can find a Ku Klux Klan whenever you want. You're not going to convince me to hate him, and I'm not going to kill him and bring him the rule of law when he killed my baby and that was my only child. If anybody has a right to kill folk, it's the Emma Till mothers of the world in the face of American terrorism. But what did black folk do at our best? He said, in the face of terrorism, we're not going to be terrorists. We'd rather be defeated with our integrity and win and be gangsters. Right. That's a rich tradition. A profound tradition. The black folks have no monopoly on them. When you look at the history of this nation, 400 years of vicious terrorism of 244 years of U.S. slavery, 90 years of Jim and Jane Crow, every two and a half days, some black body hanging from a tree. Strange fruit the southern trees bear that the great Billy Holiday sang about and our Jewish brother Maripol wrote the lyrics yes. That's a rich tradition. That's why I don't believe in collective punishment. Bin Laden has a daughter, you don't kill her. He has a third wife, you don't kill her. They're innocent. They just happen to choose to hang out with a gangster. But they don't deserve death. You see? And that's the kind of critique that I think is very important in terms of bearing witness. The same would be true in terms of Gaddafi. Why did Abraham Lincoln refuse to execute Jefferson Davis? He was wise. He believed in rule of law even when he suspended Abraham's corpus earlier. <laughs> All of us shall do with contradictions. But it's very important. Very important. And that's true for me across the board. It's true for me across the board. So the issue of militarism has to be integral to any serious talk about a poverty, any serious talk about wealth inequality, any serious struggle against homophobia, against anti Jewish hatred, anti Arab hatred, anti Muslim hatred, white supremacy, but still a major challenge. Still a major challenge. I'll say this. One of the challenges of the Occupy movement and the powers that be know this very, very well. That once poor and working class, black and brown and red folk wake up <laughs> and the sleepwalking ends, right. then we've got a serious challenge to the status quo. Amen. And the major challenge, as I said before, is how do we try to filter that Righteous indignation and rage toward the love and justice rather than the anger, bigotry, and revenge, the scapegoating that often is associated with populist uprisings and with a xenophobic is right wing. Like many of our brothers and sisters in the Tea Party. They say the government's corrupt. I agree with them. They're right. Government bought off by oligarchs, I agree with them. They're against the bailout, they've got a serious point. But then the oligarchs funded them. <laughs> and then scapegoating the most vulnerable rather than courageously, morally confronting.
the powerful. Let's focus on the immigrants. How long you been here? About two generations. Oh, I see. <laughs> Grandma just, just made it in. And now you're the definitive American. You're going to define what the limits are. You're going to police what the boundaries are. Oh, I see. So I've always been here nine generations. And for four of those generations, there was no right to learn how to read and write. Couldn't to worship God without white supervision in the land of religious liberty. That's persecuted Christians in the history of America. Stole away at night, ring shouts, held hands, lifted their voices. Here comes Wade in the water. Here comes Swing Low, Sweet Chariot. Here comes all of those spirituals that would be transformed into blues and jazz and even a little hip hop with Muslims like Lupe Fiasco being in the vanguard these days. What a rich tradition. How do we keep a lot of prophetic tradition? We love it, we fight for it, we struggle for it, we sacrifice for it, and know that in the end, I don't believe we will never, ever ascend to the standards when it comes to quality of spirituality of those enslaved ones, of the indigenous brothers and sisters wrestling with the terror coming their way and yet telling their young people what? We're not going to teach you to hate because hatred is the coward revenge against those who intimidate you. Hold the highest standards in the same way that even this generation will never produce a Curtis Mayfield or Luther Vandross or Aretha Franklin. Alicia might just have to do it. 